500 bucks. Okay. Now, you don't have to choose envelope number one if you don't want to. Okay. You're welcome to. Now, it's, all you have to do is match up two envelopes with their uh, cash amounts. Okay. And uh, you get what's inside. Now, if you don't, if you want to go for the thousand, you can choose two other envelopes if you want. But I'm telling you straight out, number one's got 500 bucks. So, do you want to choose number one as one of your two? And so I'd be guaranteed the 500 bucks? No. It doesn't guarantee. No, oh. what that means is, what that means is, if you choose number one, you're going to open two envelopes, okay? okay. Uh huh. If you choose number one, and I'm already telling you what that's got. Okay. If you find the other envelope that's got $500 in it, you win. Can I make a suggestion? Okay. One envelope. Here, listen to this. Uh-huh. There's six envelopes. Okay. Two of the envelopes have $100 inside. Okay. Two of the envelopes have $500 inside. Okay. Two of the envelopes have $1,000 inside. Okay. All you got to do is match them up. What's your suggestion, Shooty? Well, she should make envelope number one her second pick. That way, whatever her first pick is, I like she that matches idea. that. I like that idea. Fine with me. Okay, can I pick envelope number five? Number five it is. Shooting, that's, uh, that's pretty crafty. Excellent, yeah. Good strategy. Hey, buddy, we didn't anticipate that. <laughs> I'm impressed. All right, number five, did you say? Correct. Number five has $1,000 uh -huh. inside. Okay. So, uh, you got to pick one more. Okay. Um, how about envelope number uh, two? You nervous? Yes. Me too. I just moved into my new house two days ago, Ooh. and I need this money. Mmm. That's incorrect. What's wrong? No. No, it didn't match. No, oh. so what is it? I don't know if I should tell. I think you, a... you are you are to tell. All three? Yes, sir. That's All how the, three? That is how the game is played. Okay. Envelope number one, okay. which you did not choose, had $500. Uh-huh. Envelope number five, which you did choose. Had 1000 Had 1000 And envelope number two had $100 in it. Oh. So you didn't match any up, but... I don't want you to go empty, empty handed. Okay. Next time you're out at Barona, we're going to give you your first $25 gambling money on okay. the house. Okay? That sounds good. Very good. You hang on so we can set you up for a $25 okay, today chip. You did not catch me on your April Fool's Day. Oh, yeah, right. It's easy to say <laughs> that afterwards. Well. The cloud drops can't jump through them. That's what half the people at, at, the, at, the, at the speed where we're saying, I knew it all along. I did, yeah. That's why I came out here. I just came out because here. I knew. What's the sky? Guy who can't, can't urinate in public, I don't know if you could do it there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cheryl. Well, uh, uh, congratulations on the 25 bucks. Hang on, okay? I appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. All right. Jim McInnes is going to try it again next hour. Remember those numbers, okay? That's right. Because you're guaranteed to win something now right. if you wrote those down. Okay? You're guaranteed to win something now. This would be very easy. And Judy's yeah. suggestion of choosing blindly one that you don't know the amount. Which I think is great. cheating. It's fine, though. That's, that's how okay. the game is designed. That's how yeah. that's how you play concentration. All right. So if Matt Littles... Bring it on, Matt. If Matt Littles has a little hissy fit, <laughs> you have to go and take it. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, now you've heard half the envelopes and all right. three were different amounts. So choose any one of those other numbers and you, you wrote down how much money is in each envelope. Mm -hmm. You're going to win money. It's Beautiful. guaranteed. You cannot lose. Beautiful. In the 10 o'clock hour with Jim McInnes. Okay? Cool. Win a wide. We will have a winner. Next hour. What am I doing? I'm doing our last break already. You want me to do news first? Oh! Uh, after this, okay? Excellent. It's KGB. Well, it is uh, 949 on the 101 KGB. 52 degrees, partly sunny, windy and cool today. Only 60 for the high uh, I bet you can still play golf, though. Oh, yeah, we're going to play. No bets, though. No, that's it. We're going to take some time off from the bets now. Well, I think that's a good idea. And, and uh, if there is any kind of a golfing god, I think today will be the day you lose to a Brahma <laughs> I think that would be hysterical. Huh. Well, huh. I guess we didn't bet, did we? Mm, too bad. Mm. Whatever. Mm. <laughs> well, in the news this morning, the big story, and you've uh, no doubt seen it on the front pages, uh, the three guys who've been captured, and the American general who commands NATO's military forces warns Yugoslavia that it had better treat the three captured U.S. soldiers properly. Wesley Clark, uh, Clark says Belgrade knows the United States has a, quote, long memory. The Pentagon has notified the families of the three soldiers captured yesterday by Yugoslav forces. Staff Sergeants Andrew Ramirez, Christopher Stone, and Specialist Stephen Gonzalez are all members of the 1st Infantry Division stationed in Germany. In other news today, Yahoo says it's uh, cemented a deal to acquire online audio and video provider Broadcast.com. That was like a billion-dollar deal, wasn't it? Which one? Uh, Five billion. Yahoo, yeah. Buying uh, Broadcast.com which we still don't know what it is. It was either five or six and a half billion, billion. dollars. 
Meanwhile, CBS is going to buy King World Productions, the people who produce Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, and, of course, the Oprah show. That's Merv Griffin. Yeah. Selling out to CBS. Orpa. Orpa. There is new use for DNA that most people probably never envisioned. Swiss researchers have discovered that DNA conducts electricity as well as a semiconductor. That means DNA strands could one day be used to build extremely tiny electrical devices. And the good news is San Diego's toilet to tap program is down the drain. I didn't know it was still alive, but on a 5 nothing vote, City Council Committee yesterday officially killed the program. The plan to purify sewage so that it could be used for drinking water was all but dead prior to yesterday's meeting of the Natural Resources and Culture Committee. Thank God. Uh, thank God. Back in January, the City Council all but eliminated the program <laughs> when it refused to budget the $15 million needed this year to keep the project going. They would like to do something, though. Uh, with the reclaimed water for irrigation, uh, for landscaping and industrial uses. Lots of, places, lots of places do that. Yeah. yeah, they do, and I don't see anything wrong with that, but you don't right. want to drink it. Just not on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't rocks. <laughs> oh. A Santee man is in a Tennessee jail after authorities stopped him on I-40 for a traffic violation and instead found 800 pounds of marijuana in his truck. Is that over the legal limit? Yes, I believe it is, especially for Tennessee where the laws are much stricter. What is the legal limit? For for a misdemeanor of pot possession? Yeah. Is that it? Uh, you know, I don't know out here. I really don't. The big deal... Out here. <laughs> well... I knew in all the other states I lived in. <laughs> the big deal when I was going to college was that in the county where OU is placed, you could have up to an ounce, and it was only a misdemeanor. It was a ticket. How much is an ounce? And about an ounce. <laughs> about an ounce. But I mean, how much does that make up? Is that like a joint? Oh, no, that's a, that's a baggie. That's really? A full... It's a lot of pot. Well, it, it's all by weight. That's a lid. That's it's a lid of pot. They used to call it. Right. A lid is an the ounce? Hoodlums, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And how much of a lid is in a nickel bag? A nickel... I don't know about that. And I think a nickel bag is like an eighth of an ounce. I don't know, though. Okay. <laughs> I claim no knowledge of this. Got it. But anyway, this David Hill guy, uh, when they pulled him over, had drugs and a lot of paraphernalia just in plain view. Mm. Officers asked to search the rest of the vehicle, and then they got the search dog in, and there was a compartment found where most of the marijuana was hidden. He spilled his bong all over his <laughs> license and registration. Whoopsie. Nothing going on here, dude. 800 pounds worth about $2 million on the streets. No way. Wow. Way. Wow. Must have been some high-grade stuff. Well, Why would you entrust $2 million worth of pot to a dope? This is the thing. It, it's like, why are you even touching it or have any kind of paraphernalia out if you know you have something illegal? What kind of a boob, what though? Thinking? What kind of a boob says, here, transport my $2 million worth of marijuana to mm -hmm. an idiot? Yeah. Well, you know. Whatever. Drug dealers. Ronald Reagan's grandson could get locked up for three years. 20-year-old Cameron Reagan, son of Michael Reagan, oh. pleaded no contest Tuesday to one count of receiving stolen property. This could earn him up to three years in state prison. Cameron and a friend were arrested back in November for stealing things like cell phones and cash from oh, unlocked man. cars, which is almost asking for it when you get right down to it. I got a slight feeling he'll uh, not do time. How How I bet you're right. kid now? 20. <gasps> he is really? Mm -hmm. I met him when he was a little kid. Jesus. Was he a client? <laughs> no, I, 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 used I didn't to know. Work with, I didn't. I used to work with Mikey. You're sixteen now, and uh, well, there's well. something about me and I. <laughs> no, like ten years ago, when I worked at Kogo, and Mikey was um, a talk show host, and brought the kid in, and yeah, I remember my kids, and you know, the wife, and Maureen, and the sisters, and everybody. You know, well, did he seem over. like a good kid? Do you think he was good gone bad? Seemed or? like a very nice child at the time. But what do you know if you just meet somebody? But what's the other kid's name? I can't remember. Uh, the ballet dancer? Yeah. Um, oh, Ron. Yeah, Ron. Ron. Ron Jr., yeah. yeah. Well, it's your 16th birthday. <laughs> we don't want you to end up like your Aunt Ron. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll have a lot of luck with that in jail. He will be sentenced on the 4th of May. And then a small mm. county in Maryland has one of those uh, programs you've probably seen where they keep the roads clean by letting community organizations adopt a certain amount of the a roadway. Yeah. And then they pick up the litter once a month, or at least fund it somehow. Mm. Well, apparently one of the uh, generous groups who wanted to lend a hand to the cleanup effort was the Klan, as in Ku Klux Klan. The Invincible Empire Realm of Maryland wanted their name on an adopt-a-road sign, just like all the other groups. The county had a problem with that, though, so the Klan enlisted the help of the ACLU. 
took the case to court because they'd won a similar free speech case in Arkansas. Did the ACLU defend the Klan? Yes. Yes, they did. Good <laughs> God. They this week, before. the county came to a new decision instead of, because the case had not been to court yet, but instead of finding out uh, or and possibly, you know, having to let the Klan advertise with a road sign, which is essentially what they're doing, the county dropped the entire Adopt a Road campaign. Wow. And the kids, this good kids, yeah, exactly. And this cool kids, have they were all interviewed on CNN this morning, and they said, you know, we don't care whether our name's up there or not. We're going to go ahead and keep our county and our community clean. Good. Wow. We want the Klan out. I thought that was kind of cool. Now I have a, a quotation from someone. So I, the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. Right defended an organization whose main purpose is to offend other people's civil right. rights. Right. And they had they interviewed this morning... Kind of a conundrum there. <laughs> they interviewed the Grand Wizard, and I don't know if he's a regional Grand Wizard or the Grand Exalted High Poobah guy, and he looked right into the camera and said, when the county did that to us, they were racist. Oh. Not even knowing what our group stands for. Hmm. <laughs> Wait a minute, you know what? I have a pretty good idea what your group stands for. Okay. Duh. Anyway, moving along, here is a quotation that uh, you could attribute to... I'll give you a choice here. Here's the quotation. I've seen things that make me want to go right up and whack that parent. When you see abuse, you wonder what's going on at home. That quotation from none other than Michael Bolton at a press conference sponsored by Prevent Child Abuse America. Prevent child abuse by whacking the parents. Whack the parents. That's a good idea. He's a, he's a real smart cookie. Yes, he is. Sorry, no offense. I didn't mean Dude. to link your name with his. Uh, thank you. But, uh, <laughs> God, what a dork. He doesn't have any kids. And maybe that's a good thing. It's the same guy who does the toast at the AA meetings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bottoms up. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Box of wine, come <laughs> on. <laughs> sorry about that. Bon Jovi drummer Tico Torres is uh, getting a grip on the art world. He is uh, a sculptor and painter when he's not doing his drumming thing, and his latest project is a series of bronze sculptures dedicated to the grips of famous golfers and tennis players. Good some, God. Some of the famous athletes what? who have let Tico... <laughs> Good God. That's creepy. Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, and Martina Navratilova. Although he hopes one day to cast a bronze. Hi. <laughs> he, uh, he, has, he has many, many dreams. None of which... He wants to do... Uh, well, who's the soccer player? Pele. Pele. Yeah, 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 he wants to do him, too. His grip. His Pele's grip. Yeah. yeah. Feet. So it just what has, like, an open hand in that sort of position? Well, you got to assume that with Bon Jovi being, you know, where they are today, he has a lot of time to spend on this. Then play tennis or go golfing. Yeah, I know. I quit know. bronzing people's grips. Well, wait a minute, Rackets. As a golfer, if someone gave you a bronze sculpture of Arnold Palmer's grip yeah. in bronze, and there it is, a little size of a telephone on your desk, would you think it was kind of cool if they gave it to me i might but because yeah. then you could look at it and study it and see exactly how he placed his fingers and the whole thing you can do that anyway oh, yeah. Yeah. he's I only got 900 instruction videos right. and books with pictures <laughs> and all that crap out That's you got to assume he's doing this to make money Good thing. like I any other artist uh, what fantastic and i think the study of it is wonderful and i only hope that he does Pee Wee herman <laughs> <laughs> he worked so hard he worked so hard to get that line in no, too bad I don't have the tape going because I'd back up how many times you start, stop, start, stopped on that. Oh, really? Man. <sighs> well, here's an example of stupid things that people spend their money on. An Idaho couple told people that they um, had an ozone machine that would cure AIDS and cancer. Good grief. 58 year old Kenneth Thiefault and his wife, Mardell Baker. What's his name? Thiefault? Thiefault. Huh. Uh, I know. <laughs> They sold the machines for $4,800 to customers from across all of our states. They said that this ozone machine was good for you, and the actual ozone produced should be taken through the ear, <laughs> or the rectum, oh. or the gravy boat. What? Doctors say it doesn't beat cancer. It actually causes cancer. Oh, my God. Kenneth was sentenced this week to more than six years in prison, fined $100,000. The wife got three years and a $60,000 fine. Because our dogs work so hard, laying around all day and gnawing on bones, don't you think they deserve a vacation? There is now a doggy summer no. camp. A pet sitting company in Canada offers dog day adventures in the lush woods north of Toronto. Oh, brother. For a buck fifty, that's a hundred fifty bucks for a three day trip, your dog can go swimming, ass sniffing, hiking, <laughs> ass sniffing, 
canoeing or go for doggy picnics or even massages. 